Coming up next, it looks like something out of an Alfred Hitchcock movie where a flock of crows has taken over a local golf course. Plus, a new bike lane controversy in a North County neighborhood. We're working for you to get answers tonight. Frightening moments for an armored truck driver who was left dangling off a California overpass. And a man accused of a double murder in Valley Center makes his first appearance in court. This is CBS 8 News Live at 6. A 44-year-old man is in jail tonight, accused of shooting and killing his father-in-law and brother-in-law. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. I'm Marcella Lee. Prosecutors say he drove hundreds of miles to Valley Center where he committed a double murder. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes has new details in this case from outside the Vista Courthouse tonight. We're here in Vista at the North County Regional Courthouse where more than a dozen of the victim's friends and family members showed up for Christian Bogula's day in court. Investigators say on Sunday he drove down with his wife and then killed his father-in-law and brother-in-law execution style. We are going to enter not guilty pleas, deny any and all allegations. That's the word from 44-year-old Christian Bobila's public defender as he enters his not guilty plea. But um, Deputy District case, Attorney Daniel Gocknauer says. We had a brutal execution of two uh, innocent family members by the defendant. The defendant is both a flight risk based on the nature of these charges as well as he does pose a danger to the community. And that's when Judge Kelly Mock weighed in. And the court denies bail at this time. Investigators say Sunday night around 10 o'clock, a woman called 911 saying her husband was shot by Bobila at a home on Interlochen Terrace near the Native Oaks Golf Club in Valley Center. The victims, 45-year-old Vicente Reyes and 79-year-old Vincent Reyes. Prosecutors say they can't speak to why Bobila would murder his father and brother-in-law. There's still an active investigation, but here's what prosecutors did share in court. Uh, shortly after arriving at the house, he shot uh, and killed his brother-in-law, uh, Vincent Reyes, including an execution style shot to the head. Uh, he then proceeded to kill his father-in-law, Vicente Reyes. After that, investigators say Bobila drove away in a dark minivan. The defendant was then apprehended about a mile from the residence a few minutes after the shooting took place. When pressed about why Bobula would do something like this, Deputy District Attorney Daniel Gocknauer says. I'm not going to comment on the motive at this time. Uh, the, the investigation is still ongoing. Christian Bobula's next court appearance is set for September 20th for a readiness hearing. After that, on October 20th, he'll be back in court for a preliminary hearing. Reporting in Vista for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Thanks, Kirsten. A man accused of selling a fatal dose of fentanyl to the daughter of real estate developer Doug Manchester pleaded guilty today to voluntary manslaughter and drug charges. 54-year-old Joshua Breslow was previously charged with murder. Prosecutors say 49-year-old Sally Manchester Recuti did not appear to know what was in the pills she was taking or that they were laced with fentanyl. She died back in 2020. Prosecutors say Breslow continued to sell the pills even after learning of Recuti's death. He's set to be sentenced to 15 years in prison next month. New information just in on an Oceanside brush fire we brought to you live on CBS 8 at 11 a.m. Investigators say a person is responsible for starting the fire, but they don't know at this point if it was an accident or if this is a case of arson. The fire put up a lot of smoke and forced six homes to be evacuated near the railroad tracks along Skylark Drive. But in the end, firefighters were able to save the day. Some say it's a smart way to slow cars down. Others call it a dangerous change that could lead to a fatal crash. That's the controversy surrounding a road in Escondido tonight. CBS 8's Steve Price is working for you, learning more about neighbors' concerns and getting answers from the county. It's a situation that's driving some folks out here in Escondido crazy. Their lane condensed to make room for a bike lane and for parking. And they say this situation out here is so dangerous, they're worried someone's going to be killed. It's just dangerous. Marlene Pompetti says the county added a bike lane here on Circle R Drive about a year and a half ago, and that was great. But in February, they restriped the road again to add parking too. And that's the problem because it made the lanes for cars smaller. There's going to be a head-on collision if somebody's coming down with the big trucks. They come over the double yellow lines and somebody's coming up. 
they're gonna hit. Working for you, we followed a truck up the road and as a car approaches from the other direction, the truck veers into the bike lane and it wasn't just trucks. We saw cars do the same thing. So we reached out to the county's public works department and they said the smaller lane has a bigger purpose to slow drivers down. When you reduce travel lanes, what that does is uh, driver behavior results in having to reduce in speed so that they can drive within a comfort that as a result of that, they would have to reduce their speeds to be more comfortable driving. Jeff Manetta says the report they've gotten from first responders in the area is that it's working. <laughs> I don't think so. Marlene isn't convinced. She says cars still regularly drive above the posted 45 mile an hour speed limit. And with the smaller lanes, there's not much room for error. We researched street widths and this does meet the minimum requirement, but check this out. The lane between the stripes is exactly nine feet. Our SUV is eight feet, four inches, giving us just eight inches of total clearance. And we saw several trucks a lot bigger than our SUV. We will continue to observe the conditions there and we'll observe if there are any uh, safety concerns. Jeff is willing to revisit the striping if there's a problem, but he says he's done this in other areas and over time it works, slowing drivers down while creating a space for bikes and parked cars. Working for you, Steve Price, CBSA. Thanks, Steve. And this was one of the stories brought to you to us by one of you visiting our CBS 8 booth at the San Diego County Fair. If you have a story you'd like us to look into, you still have time to visit our pop-up newsroom in person at the fair, or you can always email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. Protests and lawsuits are still ramping up tonight over the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. Democrats are trying to drive up support in this year's midterm elections, but as Skylar Henry reports, positions on abortion rights could also affect Republican primaries. Protesters on Capitol Hill called on lawmakers to take action to protect abortion rights. Roe is dead, uh, but we don't give up. The Supreme Court does not have the final word. It simply gave the issue back to the elected representatives to be dealt with in the political process. Tuesday, eight states held primary or runoff elections, the first one since the Supreme Court's historic decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. I will listen to people. In Colorado, Joe O'Day, a Republican who has voiced support for some abortion rights, beat an anti-abortion rights opponent in his U.S. Senate primary. Meanwhile, lawsuits continued to mount. Wisconsin's Democratic leaders filed a challenge against their state statute banning abortion dating back to 18 49. Already, some state judges have temporarily blocked similar so-called trigger laws in Texas, Utah, and Louisiana, where providers at one of the state's three abortion clinics brace for next steps. We're taking each day as we can, seeing as many patients as we can while we can. The next battle over reproductive rights may have already begun. After Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas suggested the court should reconsider any cases protecting access to contraceptives. Clarence Thomas, it, it was quite forthright <laughs> that he is inviting um, people to bring these challenges. Following a surge in demand, several major pharmacies like CVS and Rite Aid are imposing limits on the purchase of emergency contraception, also known as the morning after pill. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the Supreme Court. The Biden administration has made access to family planning services, including emergency and long acting contraceptives, part of its plan of action in response to last week's ruling. Meantime, the Biden administration is ramping up its fight against the spread of monkeypox. The White House is sending 56,000 doses of the only vaccine called Genios to areas where the virus is spreading fastest and encouraging more people at risk to get vaccinated. There have been more than 300 cases in more than half of the U.S., including California. Even if someone catches monkeypox, experts say getting the vaccine can reduce symptoms. Tonight, people in Lakeside say a golf course in their neighborhood is going to the birds. Crows, specifically. A flock has made the golf course their new destination every night. CBS 8's Rocio de la Fe spoke to one of our viewers who's been taking pictures. Every day at sundown, the fields at this Lakeside golf course behind me get covered with crows. The people who live here are describing it as an invasion. 
It's uh, the Willowbrook Golf Course. It's a nine-hole uh, golf course. David Dehoff has lived in his lakeside home for more than 20 years. They just seem to be roaming around out there. So. And says he's never seen what's being described by neighbors as an invasion of black crows. This is the first time I've seen all the uh, crows like this. I'd say there's several hundred pretty much on the ground in the trees. Dehoff says after spending a few weeks on vacation, he came back home to a sea of crows. I wonder where they come from and what's the attraction here for them. He says they come at dusk and then disappear into the night. It's been every night since we've been back. I, I don't remember them being here before we left. Other than that, they're just roaming around there until dark and then where they go after dark, I don't know. Dehop and his neighbors say they wonder what's attracting the birds to the Willowbrook golf course behind their house. They think it's out of that Alfred Hitchcock movie, The Birds. <laughs> it's not the first time the crows have made Southern California their home. Throughout the years, the birds have been sighted in neighborhoods across San Diego and surrounding areas. I was just really curious as to what was drawing them here. The population has been on the rise since the 1980s thanks to an abundance of food. And although crows can be aggressive when it comes to food, according to the San Diego Audubon Society, David and his neighbors say so far, so good. It's odd, yes. A little freaky. Crows tend to feed on insects, fruits, and seeds. They're also known for killing other birds. It's still not clear why they are targeting that particular golf course or where they're coming from. They are loud. They are loud.